When we left off, we were talking about adding the headlines for these websites out to the right here. So let's go ahead and let's get started doing that. Back in the code, what we would like to be able to do is to just say website.headline. Let's see what happens if we try this. I call this wishful coding, when you just write the code that you would like to have and then see what happens. So let's just see what happens. If we refresh the page, you see we have this undefined method headline for website. Now, if you look at this notation, this website followed by this kind of identifier, that's telling us that it's saying we don't have a method headline for this website object. Now, we have not talked about object-oriented programming at all, so I don't expect you to know what we're talking about when we talk about objects. So let me give you a really, really quick talk about what's going on here. So when we call back website.all in the controller, we're getting all of the websites from the database and we're mapping them into Ruby objects with the type with the type website in this case. Now don't worry about what that means we will get there but what you need to think about is that when we're in the view and we're iterating through each one of these websites with websites.each we're actually taking each individual website object and we are calling methods on it. Now this name method is actually getting the name attribute from the database and we have that by default because we have a name attribute stored in the database. We don't have a headline method because we haven't defined it and because there is no headline attribute for the uh, website model in the database. So we actually need to define it. To define methods for website objects, we are going to write a method on the website model. So remember that right here we're calling website.headline. So let's go back into our website model. This is in the models folder. And we're going to create def headline. And let's just give it a string and say, hey, it's a headline. So now if we go back to our browser and we refresh, now we get this, hey, it's a headline thing. So each one of the objects knows how to respond to a uh, headline method. We'll get into more about that later in another course. But it knows how to respond because we defined it in the model. So for each one, it just prints out, hey, it's a headline. But that's really not what we're interested in. So let's go back over here into the solutions. This is uh, solutions for, I believe it's the first couple of your first program uh, article and then the, your first um, web pages. So let's, I'm, I'm just going to walk you through this. Um, we're going to need this require open URI. Um, I'm going to come in here into the dashboard controller and actually no, just kidding. I'm going to put it in the website model above the class definition. So save that and then let's just walk through this step by step and remember what I told you when I told you so I'm going to copy this file and then this content. But remember what I told you when I told you that the last line of a method gets returned. That's going to be important here. So we're opening up HTTP slash slash website. This is from, from before in the way that we defined everything before. That's not actually what we want here. What we want here is name because remember we're in the website model and so we have access to the attributes already and the name attribute is where things like cnn.com are stored. So just save this and realize that content is being returned and let's go back to the browser and refresh and see what's happening. And bam! We have this huge, huge amount of stuff. 
So what's actually happening is it's going out and it's getting the content for each one of those websites and it's just printing it out right there where we're printing out the headline. But obviously we don't want that. So let's come back into our example um, and let's just copy, let's copy this whole thing from the begin down to the end after the rescue. Um, and let's just put this right here inside this headline and let's just update it. Um, you can select it all and hit tab and it'll line it all up right. So remember we just changed this from website here uh, to name. Let's see. Um, so let's save that and then just refresh that page again. Okay, so now we're actually getting some stuff. So, um, but it's not exactly what we want. So on CNN, we're getting an A tag with a bunch of stuff and then could ISIS retaliate against the West with the BR tag right in the middle. And apparently Huffington Post has an image stored between the first H1 tags on the page. Because remember, the way that we have this written, it's actually just going to go find the first H1 tag and get whatever is there. So this is where the identifier comes in. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to search through all the text on the site and we're going to find um, the headline that we want based on an identifier that we give it. Now, I want to go ahead and, and say up front here, this is not a standard way to do things. If you're going to get data from an external site, normally you're going to use some kind of API or something like that. This is really just to spark your creativity and imagination. Um, and actually, uh, Airbnb is sort of famous for doing something kind of like this whenever they uh, were trying to grow. Um, they actually uh, set up a thing so that they kind of hacked Craigslist so that whenever you would create a post on Airbnb, it could cross post to Craigslist. And Craigslist doesn't have an API. And they've since changed it so that you can't do it anymore. Um, but anyway, it's, it's just, uh, it's cool to be able to be creative and, not, and to think outside the box, I guess is the point. So let me show you how to do this. Let's move on. Okay. So remember when I told you that this index method it starts looking at the beginning of a string and finds the first location of what you pass in unless you give it another starting point. So we are going to pass in the, uh, we're going to create a variable called start location. And we're going to pass it in there. And we're also going to pass it in here. Now, what's going to happen is it's going to look for the h1 tag after our start location and it's going to look for the closing h1 tag after our start location okay so now start location we're going to set that equal to contents.index and then we're going to pass in our identifier now let me show you what I mean with the identifier thing. So let's go back to the browser um, and let's go to websites. Okay, so my first one is cnn.com. So let's check this out. Um, let me edit it actually. Now I'm going to go over here to cnn.com. And we have this, could ISIS retaliate against the West? And this is what I'm really interested in. So let me inspect this element by right clicking or control clicking depending on what you're on and hopefully yeah it's gonna bring this up and here's where our message is could ISIS retaliate against the West so if we look we've got an H1 tag here and we've got this CNN banner large so that's really what I want is this CNN banner large so I'm gonna go back over here and I'm going to give this CNN banner large and update. And now, if let me just show you what, I, what I'm trying to do here. So we're going to start looking for an H1 tag after we find this CNN banner large. So it finds the CNN banner large, and then it looks and finds the H1 directly after. 
and then what our code does is it grabs all of the content between so we end up with this a tag with all this stuff in it so if we look back in our dashboard and refresh um, and this is what we already had because it turns out that's the first a or the first h1 on the page um, but then we we want to do the same thing for all the other ones so if we look at the onion it's actually pulling back some image or something so let's go to the onion and do the first and do the same thing so uh, let's go ahead and just inspect this and this is not a real news website just in case some of you never encountered this don't freak out if you see something crazy on here um, anyway so if we look in here we've got this uh, h1 tag and it is in this article with this lead story thing so I'm gonna assume and I could be wrong but I'm gonna assume this is the only lead story on the page so let's go back here and go to our websites and we're gonna edit the onion and we're gonna put lead story update and then let's go back and check out what we've got so now we've got nothing so what did I do wrong lead dash story I put lead underscore story so let me go back now now we've got this uh, that's the a tag going to that and then here is the actual title right here so let's go ahead and I'm gonna jump off and do this for the other ones really quick and maybe add a couple more and then um, show you how to remove all these tags and stuff and make it display properly okay so I've added a couple sites I got the Huffington Post set up and I got the Wall Street Journal set up um, if you have a hard time finding sites that work don't stress uh, I did too um, some sites don't have h1 tags some sites may not work for whatever other reasons anyway um, I you can find plenty of sites where you can pull back the headlines um, so what we want to do now is actually get these things to display properly so let's go back into the code and go back into the view so there's this really cool tag or I mean a uh, command or method or whatever in rails where you can do strip tags just call that and let's go check out what it does it's gonna strip all of the HTML tags and just leave us with the headlines so technically this meets the requirements so it's telling us the website and it's telling us uh, what the headline is but let's keep going because this isn't really that awesome yet 